Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And today I'm going to talk about what I carry in my side by side now versus the video I made two years ago or whatever it was when I really didn't know what to bring along. I was just kind of going off other YouTube videos and things like that. But before I get into this, uh, a couple things. Uh, the first one is um, there's another YouTube channel called Dawn's ATV Adventures, and they were just down at the Hatfield McCoy Trails, I believe, in West Virginia. Uh, and they had a very, very tragic event happen during their outing. Um, one of the people in their group uh, passed away on while they were riding. So that's that's just horrible. And um, Don, I know you and I have had our differences, but I'm sorry you had to deal with that, man. That's brutal. Uh, the next piece is uh, Joe Robinette, another channel that uh, we've chatted a few times. And um, he just lost his dog, and he just got this dog, too, not very long ago. And uh, Joe, if you're watching, buddy, I'm very sorry, man. I feel your pain, brother. With all of that being said, um, we can get to the happy part of the video now, which is where I talk about what gear I carry. So it has changed quite a bit, actually, since the first time. And it's a lot more focused on tools this time around. Uh, there's a little bit more in terms of recovery. Medical has been bolstered quite a bit as well. Um, well, I'll just, you'll just see. So the very first item is this guy right here. This is a tiger tail and it's sitting on a custom mount that um, my dad made. This is actually off of his 2016 Commander. And the only reason it's not in his current one is because uh, I hooked him up with a rear winch for it. <laughs> so for a fair trade, if you ask me. Anyway, uh, so it's a custom mount and it just slides into the hitch receiver and the tiger tail sits up a little bit higher and it's actually a lot stronger than the, the mount that the, I think it's KFI, uh, sends with the tiger tail. Really, really nice for recovery because it allows you to not have to uh, constantly hook up a sling or a toe strap, unhook it, coil it up again. You know, it's just way more convenient if a guy just needs a quick tug. So this comes with me on every single ride. And to go along with that, there's I have several of these um, straps here. I think these are just 10,000 pound straps, so they're not very strong. But for the majority of our stocks, a 10,000 pound strap will do just fine. While we're on the topic of rear end recovery items, I'd like to encourage everyone to not get fooled by companies like this that make a product that looks cool, but when it comes down to it, they are subpar in terms of build quality. And I mean, this isn't the only hook made by this company that has corkscrewed exactly like this in the exact same break point. So just, if you have a side-by-side, -side, the thing's heavy. It's not an ATV that weighs 800 pounds. Like these things are really heavy. Cool shit like this may look cool, but it's pretty much useless. So that's why I now have a tiger tail. Uh, and to go while we're still on the recovery train, um, I actually, this was a gift from my dad and it is a gorgeous snatch block made by Ranger. And I think it's just off of Amazon, but it's really nice because it has a Zerk fitting. So you can grease the bearing inside and it really, if you take care of it, will last you indefinitely. And I had a shitty snatch block before and this one is a significantly better. And I'm kind of excited to try it out, but at the same time, I hope I never have to because it means I'm stuck pretty bad, if you know what I mean. So that's that. And you'll notice, you'll start to notice now that everything you're gonna see is packed up in Ziploc bags and that's by design. Because I'm still running, if you watch the first video, I'm still using these green totes, but as I've learned, those green totes and the bottom side of my um, bed storage is neither dry nor watertight. So, Everything had to go in Ziplocs because I just went through my old stuff and there was a lot of it I had to throw out because of water damage. So getting into gear that I always bring but you hope you never have to use. Um, this is just my little tiny, it's been pared down quite a bit, um, survival gear. So there's a space blanket, a life straw, fire starting, and some fishing uh, kit. Like a fishing kit if that makes sense. A little tiny one. And... I, Realistically, most of the places we ride, 
um, we're not going to be riding alone. So uh, unless something catastrophic happened and every single machine broke down, there's a good chance we'd be able to find our way out. Now moving on, I think there's one more box of random stuff here. So yeah, just one more box of random stuff. So I have 12 volt compressor, flashlight, bug spray, fold up saw, all in this one. Next, this is what I like to call the tire repair bag. So inside of this bag, tire repair and just kind of like general repair stuff. So inside of this bag, I got some zip ties, a little bit of duct tape, a shitload of tire plugs, two tubes of rubber cement, electrical tape, a pair of gloves, um, pliers, a couple different pairs of pliers, the actual tire plug inserting tools, whatever they're called, air pressure gauge, I guess, a couple little screwdrivers, and just uh, those sorts of things. This is just mainly for essentially tire repair, as you can tell. Now this here is, uh, it's just a Molly pouch, but I still put it in a Ziploc bag because it's not waterproof. And this is where I have my socket set. I actually bought an entire socket set to use in the machine and just to keep in the machine. And the reason I did that was because if you remember the video where I swamped last year, I, was taking my plug out on the side of the trail along with draining my clutch and I didn't have the tools to do that my and Steve my buddy who uh he has that green and white razor he'll be back this season if you were wondering uh he had to end he actually hooked me up with the tools I needed because I was so woefully unprepared and I hate being that guy who's woefully unprepared because I know damn well I'm the first person to lip off everyone who's unprepared so it sucks when I have to eat my own words and I'm the one who's unprepared. Okay, so now getting into medical. So there's two bags here for medical. And this one is basically just the cuts bag. So there's band-aids, all sorts of disinfecting wipes, antiseptic gels, um, gauze pads, tape, everything to do with cuts essentially. And then this is more the general, but also this is the bag that's got some really bolstered cool stuff in it. So this is a chest seal. It's highly unlikely someone will get shot on the side of the trail, but it's it's good for general puncture wounds too. Imagine this, you're walking through a water hole and your foot catches a root, you fall down and impale yourself in the chest with a twig. It can happen, it can happen, and one of these could save your life. I've also got an EpiPen, an actual epinephrine pen, two tubes of Afterbite, water purification tabs, some quick clot gauze, and I think, oh, there's some more 3M tape. There's some trauma shears, another solar blanket, Q-tips. This is an actual cold pack. So you break it open and it actually get cold. Um, triangular bandage, I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, and a pair of uh, sterilized, pre like cleaned sterile um, gloves. So if you have to work on somebody who has a bit of a bigger cut, um, you're not infecting potentially yourself or them. And just some Tylenol in there. So that's the robust side of the medical stuff. And the reason we did that was if you watched our last video, we had a minor medical incident on the trail. Luckily it was minor, it could have been a lot worse. And it kind of rattled us both. And we were like, we really need to bolster up our medical gear. Excuse me. So now I'm kind of gonna springboard back to this because I have to go through this container. And this is just adding into the recovery side of things. So there's booster cables. <clears throat> Excuse me, hope I never have to use those. Just a general shitty rope. <laughs> I was going to make a joke there, but I'm not going to because I'm going to try and keep it PG. <laughs> and um, a series of shackles of various sizes here. So we've got those little guys, and then we got a bigger one here. And if you watch the Matawa series, you know we actually broke one of these open, like stripped the threads off and pulled it open. So that's why we went and got one that's just a hair bigger. Um, another tow rope, not kinetic, just a straight up rope. Small tow strap that I will likely never use. And another 10,000 pound strap that's still coiled up. So that's the rest of the recovery box. And I just wanted to go through all of this stuff. And there's still a couple of more things, but I wanted to go through all of this stuff before I get to those because we really it's kind of evolving what you bring along and if you're new to the off-road world you'll find out what i thought what i'm talking about based on 
it's there's so many variables like how likely are you to blow a belt you know how likely are you to get stuck if you ride in the desert well then you don't need too much recovery gear you won't need to worry about snatch blocks because there's really nothing to winch to in the desert anyway except another machine um that you know if you don't ride off the beaten path that far if you stay close to town you're not going to need a as robust of a medical kit you're not going to need um maybe everything that i bring along but i'm just doing it because i really try to be prepared and it sucks when you're not okay so now getting into the bigger thing that i bring well there's a couple and the camera is actually sitting on one right now and this is a drift sun cooler it's a basically a yeti knockoff and this does come along on every single ride this is what holds our water this is what holds our food for the day this is what holds extra food this is what comes along every single ride without fail and i'm in love with this cooler it's half the price of a yeti and performs just as good amazon sometimes is a really good place to get gear so now set the camera back down um this is the big one i've started this season and i'm going to <laughs> after having to use it twice on the last ride um, I'm never going to bring it or not bring it again. Um, this is my brand new Husqvarna 450 Rancher that um, Stacy was ever so kind to buy me for a gift. And um, certainly am in love with this saw. Can't wait to use it more just because it's a brand new saw. You know, if, if you're a man and you buy a new tool, you know what I mean. Um, the reason I started bringing this was because we were running into circumstances where guys were... We were going along on a trail and there were trees down and it was not the type of tree where my little fold up saw with a 10 inch blade or 10 inch uh, saw blade would be sufficient to cut it. And I was tired of having to be dependent on everyone else to bring a chainsaw. And I certainly didn't want to have to bring my dad's chainsaw every time because his chainsaw is old and nothing against old stills, but I just don't want to take the chance on it breaking when I'm out there. And then to go along with it, uh, I've actually got sent this by the company Saw Hall, or Gear Hall, I believe they're called. Um, and this is a scabbard for the chainsaw, and it's supposed to mount on the roll cage, but it didn't work out, so we're going to do something custom. But you'll see that in the upcoming video that's going to be titled Painkiller Gets a Facelift, something to that effect. But there's a whole bunch of other stuff you have to see in that video as well. So now this is the last thing I want to talk about, and it's a very, very new addition to uh, the, the machine. And it is the quad lock handlebar mount phone holder. And this is the wireless charger. And let me tell you something, guys, this, I am not sponsored by quad lock. I paid for this. Um, this is the best phone mount I have ever, ever used. And the wireless charger, if you use your phone like a GPS, like I do, you know it has to stay charged all the time, otherwise it's going to die and then you're going to be lost. So the fact that this is a wireless charger and it also has vibration dampening in it, so when I'm ripping down the road doing 60, it the phone isn't bouncing around. It actually does a really good job of keeping it, keeping it stable. I highly would recommend picking one of these up if you use your phone for navigation when you're out on the trails. It is worth the money. I think it's about 200 bucks Canadian for the wireless charging head, the mount, and all of that jazz. I think it's 200, could be 150, I'm not sure. It was a while ago when I bought it. But, so there you have it. And that's pretty much all I have for uh, gear I carry around in the machine at all times. If there's a very specific ride that I know there's gonna be a little bit more mud or more of insert problem here um then i'll bring more of whatever i may need on that ride but that this is more of a general guideline of what i now bring every single ride with me compared to when i first started the channel whatever it was three years ago i watch if you watch the first video you'll hear me say several times uh, yeah i won't be changing a belt on the side of the trail you know you're gonna have to get towed out well i've actually changed that opinion I can change the belt on the side of the trail. It would take me about an hour start to finish to get it just because I've had to do it so many times. I can do it that quick in this machine. 
and I'm capable of doing that. So I have the tools in there to change a belt. You'll notice that I didn't carry a spare belt in there. Well, and that's because I don't have a spare belt presently. The spare belt's actually in the machine and I'm just waiting on money to become available to buy a spare belt to keep in there. Um, other than that, I think I have myself as covered as I can be uh, for major to moderate trail side issues. And if you guys have any input on what I should carry or what you guys carry or, you know, an item that you have that not many people have, but you use it often and everyone who sees it, it's like, oh, that's a great idea. You know, kind of one of those things. Uh, if you have those, feel free to comment down below. I'd like to, I'd like you guys to comment down below and tell me why I'm wrong for carrying some of the stuff I carry. Tell me why I'm right. Tell me all of that stuff. I want to get you guys involved in the conversation as much as I can. So... Stay tuned. We got a ride video coming up probably in the next week or so. We're going to hit up a brand new spot that I've never been to before, and it should be hella fun. So rock hard, ride free, and I'll see you on the next one.